Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're in the shop again today and we've got a little project here. Uh, what you're looking at right now is a <clears throat> is a toolbox for a uh, Ford GTB Burma Jeep and this is a toolbox off one of the bomb service trucks and kind of tough to see but let me see if I can get you in there you see that guy up on that upper part of the lift there that is a personal project of mine it's a um, it's a Burma Jeep a bomb service truck and um, I was lucky enough to have a buddy who had a toolbox that I could copy and reproduce because I was missing the one on my vehicle <clears throat> and you can still see some of that original uh, Ford ocean gray paint is what they called that and I need to make a reproduction of this but on closer inspection I realized this one had been cut down um, by quite a few inches uh, it was turned into a tow truck um, the, the Burma Jeep that this toolbox came off of um, you could see it says on there not responsible for scratch bumpers but um, it's got all the details we need to make one and I was lucky enough to uh, hear from another guy who was able to give me some dimensions that I'm using to uh, to make this toolbox so you can see on that back panel there's a little joggle in there where the side wraps around it and then in the bottom uh, it's just brought up like a pan and uh, everything's welded together but um, if you look at that joggle right there, I'm going to uh, show you how we make that. And the back piece is basically just straight. Um, there's no joggle on that side because that's where they cut it. But the back piece is just a straight piece. And it's got two one-inch offsets right there. And um, we're going to make that back piece right now. I've got, um, I've got some pieces cut out here just sitting on the bench. I made up all my blanks, did all my calculations and stuff, cut out all the blanks. And uh, we're making this out of 14 gauge cold rolled steel. And um, you can see how the box, uh, it's got a bend there and then it comes around and then it goes all the way down and bends, comes around the back again. Uh, so that's one big piece and we'll put those bends in there and we'll use the pull max and the flanger and things like that and uh, I'll just show you how we uh, put this box together uh, we're gonna head over to the pull max right now and I'm gonna set some dies up make a test run and um, see if we can't put that offset in there uh, just like the original so I'll set the camera up and uh, see if I can get you a shot of it going through the pull max okay we're over at the pull max here and I've got my set of uh, joggling dies in there and I made those specific for some 14 gauge material and I've got a fence set up <clears throat> and they're in a closed position now I'm going to turn the machine on and then we'll uh, open them up put the material in and we'll make a test pass and see if we like see if we like the um, the width and the depth and everything and uh, if that's good then we'll run the real piece through so uh, hang in there and uh, let's see what happens when we send this piece through
Okay, I think there you could see the offset that we just made in there. And we went 74 thousandths deep, which is the thickness of the 14 gauge. And let me see if I can get you in there. Now when we wrap our side around there and we put that bend in there, that's going to lap in there and this is going to be flush here. So that's why they put that little offset in there um, so that this didn't stick out the thickness here. So that's just going to go like that. That's our back piece. And that's finished up now. <clears throat> and we still got to make the top and the main box here. But, um, we're going to work on the bottom next and I'll take you over to the flanger and uh, you know, we'll make we'll use the flanger like a little box and pan break and we'll put the four edges on it in the flanger um, and they'll all come out perfect at a, at a three quarter height. So I'm going to get that set up next and uh, meet you over at the flanger in just a little bit. Okay here's the top piece and you can see I've got some marks there um, the top of the toolbox has a one inch flange on it and you can see I gotta notch the corners out I've got some one inch tooling already set up in the flanger uh, I had to make a cross member for a 51 Chevy and I was using some one inch dies so we'll do that one first but we're just gonna notch it out that's the bottom it's got a three quarter by three quarter notch in it uh, we'll notch it out the same as that and we'll just cut that on the bandsaw and then we'll run it through the flanger. Uh, you could do it in a brake as well. Um, but this is uh, just over 5 feet of 14 gauge. And, um, you know, it takes a lot to pull that. You know, working by myself and uh, kind of tweak my back a little bit when I was moving all that uh, heavy equipment in um, last week. So uh, I'm just going to take it easy and run it through the flanger. Um, it's just easier for me to do right now. So uh, we'll get this notched out and we'll get that flanger fired up and uh, I'll show you how that goes through there. Okay everybody, like I say you could just uh, you could bend these flanges on your uh, finger brake, uh, press brake, whatever you have. But um, I'm going to run them through the flanger. That way I don't have to worry about setting up any fingers on anything and uh, it's a little bit bigger than the press brake I have so we'll just use the flanger like a box and pan brake and uh, <clears throat> we'll get real nice flanges we'll have the exact same radius on all of them instead of switching from one brake to another and um, it's just the way I'm gonna do it here and like I say there's plenty of other ways to get your uh, your top bent up but uh, I'm gonna run it through the flanger and uh, I think you've seen this before in some other videos but uh, I'll give you some highlights here. I'll show you uh, starting off, and then uh, I'll show you the finish. So uh, here we go. We'll uh, we'll get the first pass in there all the way around.
Okay, I've got the flange about 95% of the way done. We're just going to give it a uh, a final pickup with the with the hand wheel there, and uh, we'll planish that edge out and get it exactly 90 degrees to the rest of the panel, and uh, we'll run that through, and this should be the finished pass on it. So here we go. Okay, now here's our top with the flanges on it. And that's exactly a one inch flange. It's easy to get it on the flanger because uh, you know when the tooling says one inch it's going to be exactly an inch. Um, you can see our everything meets up just perfectly. And you see that little gap there, we'll fill that with some weld and then we'll round the corners off just a little bit so they're not so sharp uh, hard to see on the original toolbox but that's that corner right there is kind of rounded around you can see they ran a, a weld bead down there looks like they just took an arc welder and ran a bead down there and then rounded it off and we'll do the same thing here and our our width and our length came out perfect um, now if you're making one of these or you're making any kind of sheet metal project uh, you've got to take into consideration your bend allowances and um, <clears throat> I've talked about that in previous videos um, this is a what they call a, a square bend we measured outside dimensions here um, for outside to outside that'd be called a, a square bend so you have to deduct a certain amount depending on your material thickness otherwise you'll wind up with too too large a piece so um, <clears throat> You can find charts, I think, on the internet or in some old books and stuff. You can find bend allowance charts. Um, and this is 14 gauge, so you have to allow for bends. Uh, it's about 120 thousandths per bend. So on, on, on the width of this, uh, on this width here, uh, outside to outside, uh, we got two bends there. So you take off 120, and that would equal 240. That's almost a quarter of an inch. So, um, if your sheet metal projects are kind of getting away from you, uh, you got to take into consideration your bend allowances. Uh, if you're measuring on the inside, you're going to add uh, length to it. Uh, if you're measuring on the outside, you're going to subtract. Uh, it just depends if you're doing square or reverse bends. Um, the reverse bends, you always um, you add, and the square bends, you always deduct. So, just something to think about. Uh, if you're finding your sheet metal projects aren't going the way they should. Um, uh, send me a comment if you need more information on that and uh, I'll direct you in the right right direction to go uh, if you need more information. But um, we're gaining on it. We've got the back and we've got the top now. Um, if I want to do that bottom I'm going to have to change over the um, the tooling in the, in the flanger. Uh, and you can see on this front 
we got another little joggle there and then we got a bend and it's a big piece it's got a lot of bends to it uh, so I think we'll do the bottom next uh, and I'll set up with some three-quarter tooling and uh, and run that through the flanger so I'll show you that when that's done and uh, then we'll move on to the main main box part okay here's our bottom piece fresh off the flanger and we've got a three-quarter got a three-quarter flange on there I think you can see that okay so now we're gonna move on to the main box assembly and do all that bending and if you notice um, we've got an edge on the sides in the front we've got a couple little corner braces in here um, <clears throat> And we've got to notch that corner out on a 45 degree angle and we've, we've got some uh, offsetting to do. So there's a bunch to do on this piece and uh, we'll get to it and uh, I'll show you how we get that in shape. Okay, there's our first bend on the main box. And that's duplicating this bend right here. Okay, and then you can see we laid out that's our bend line and we've got two 45 degree angles here so they'll meet as a 90 and the same thing down this end and a little bit on the corner there and what that's duplicating is that joint right there well not a joint but uh, just a little detail in the building of it right in there um, so we'll continue on with the bending and uh, we'll start to put this guy together okay we've got the box that we're making laying down and you can see we've got our bends in here and there's our joint and that gets welded and I've got the bottom pan is what you see in there sitting vertical just checking the fit of everything there's our other joint here and our little bend and here's a just a scrap piece of uh, joggled iron here uh, steel here and you can see when we put this bend in there we left just enough room to slip that in there that's what the joint will look like, it's a little big, this joint's a little big but you get the idea, that slips in there and then this whole area here is, is flush so it's come along nicely, we've got our half inch bends and our side bends and uh, the front piece is just about done now we still got to put the um, we still got to put this detail in there, this joggle, so when the top comes down, it it um, it has room to open and close. Um, so we're going to set up and run that through the pull max again and get that and get that um, that detail in the front of the box here. So that's coming next, and uh, I'll get set up for that and meet you back over at the pull max. Okay, everybody, uh, I got the joggle in there. I I couldn't get the camera set up and um, and handle the piece and, and show you how it was going. Uh, it's just too big a piece at this point to uh, to handle through there, so I had no place to set the camera up and I uh, didn't have anybody to help me hold it. So had to do it by myself, and uh, we got that detail in there. I think you can see it okay. There you can see the offset. I think you can see it. So the top will fit down there. So I think I've got just about all the pieces um, made. I've still got to cut this back piece. Uh, I think you can see down in this area here. 
Uh, they cut it quite a bit higher than that so that the floor would slip in there. Um, so we still got to mark that out and, and cut these guys here on each side. And then we'll uh, we'll clean all the parts. We'll sand them and get any bits of uh, rust or oil off them. Uh, we'll get everything clecoed together. Uh, we'll put some weldable primer in between all the joints. And uh, we'll put this together like we put together most of the stuff you see me build um, with weldable primer in there. Uh, and then we got to find a latch. I'm not sure if this is the correct latch. Uh, if anybody out there has an original um, toolbox with the original latch on it, I'd be happy to uh, see what you have there. Uh, I think this might be the original part there, but I don't know if this is. So, if there's any GTB owners out there that have the original latch, I'd be interested in seeing what it is. And also, be interested in seeing what the top of your toolbox looks like. Uh, these look like original blocks and an original kind of wing nut there riveted on. Not exactly sure what, uh, what kind of tools that was holding. Um, so if anybody has that information, I'd be, uh, uh, I'd be um, happy to get it. So um, let me know. And um, I'm going to take a little break right now, but I'll come back with you and um, show you the assembly of the box. And uh, I'll try and find some hinges, or maybe we're going to have to make the hinges. I don't know if anything's commercially available. But um, I'm going uh, to get working on the hinges soon and I'll show you how everything goes together okay hang in there and I'll be back with you in a little bit okay I've got the toolbox kinda clamped together with some Clecos uh, just to hold everything in place and you can see the details we've got our front offset in there I got the back area cut that we talked about so that it hits so that this offset here comes flush on the inside and it came together pretty nice nice and square nice and straight and it's coming along pretty nice I'm going to try and flip it here for you Okay, there's the offset and that makes everything nice and flush there so when this box goes up against something uh, nothing's sticking out and like I say I've just got a quick uh, put together we'll take everything apart we'll deburr all the holes and we'll put some weldable primer in there and we'll pop some holes and we'll uh, we'll get this welded together but, um, I guess now is a moment of truth. We'll uh, we'll try and get that top fit on there and see how that goes. I got to get these little clamps off here. Um, just a little a little Clico clamp. Uh, these are super handy when you're working alone. And if you just want to clamp something together. And we got one down here. Okay, let me get set up and um, we'll try that top on there next. Okay, I'm going to try and get that top on there. And this is the first fit. We'll see if we, uh, if all our dimensioning was right. Okay, looks pretty good. Now I don't have the hinges yet. I still got to find some some of the right size hinges, and uh, we'll get those on. We'll get these corners welded up, and everything 
and looks like it's fitting real good. And then we'll just open up like that. So that's the basic toolbox. And um, like I say, we're going to get everything pulled apart, cleaned up, deburred, primed, and welded together. Let you get the basic idea how to put something like that together. And um, I think we'll end this video here because I think it's getting kind of long. And um, I'll give you a shot somewhere down the road of the finished box with the hinges on it. And uh, like I said, I still want to try and find the correct latch for it and figure out what those wood blocks were and things like that. But I'll get all the details done. Um, I might take you back on another video and show you me welding it together. Uh, if anybody like to see that, just let me know. And um, I'll show you the completed box. Um, and sandblast it. Uh, we'll sandblast it. We'll prime it. And uh, we'll get it ready for some of that Ford Ocean Gray uh, paint. So... I still got to put little details in like the corner braces and things like that, but um, I'll show you the completed box when it's done. So um, if you like the video, hit the like button or subscribe if you like, like what you're seeing. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to see, uh, let me know. I'll try and get it out there for you. And if anybody's having any tough metal working problems, uh, just uh, send me a comment and uh, see if I can help you through it. And um, that's it for today. And thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.